Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar, Copy Number Analysis and Visualization in Axiom Analysis Suite. My name is Marcy Sullivan and I'm a Field Bioinformatics Specialist for Thermo Fisher Scientific. In this webinar, we'll start by reviewing the best practices workflow for sample QC and genotyping before we go through some of the copy number capabilities for Axiom microarrays. Then I'll show a tutorial or demo of working with Axiom data for copy number. In this webinar, we'll be looking at data from the Precision Medicine Diversity Research Array. This array provides both a fixed regions copy number analysis for regions of interest in pharmacogenomics, plus a whole genome copy number discovery workflow. And at the end, I'll provide a summary and some contact information. While the tutorial in this webinar will focus on copy number, I'd like to first review what we call the best practices workflow in Axiom Analysis Suite. For all Axiom array types, the best practices workflow performs sample QC and genotyping. Since we want to include high quality samples in our later copy number discovery workflow, the sample QC metrics resulting from the best practices workflow are important to evaluate and will help us decide whether a certain sample should be excluded from copy number analysis. Therefore, it's recommended to run the best practices workflow on your samples prior to running the copy number discovery workflow. In addition, for some array types, such as the Precision Medicine Diversity Research Array, which we will be using in this demo, the best practices workflow also provides copy number information for fixed regions of pharmacogenomic content. I'll show an example of this a little later in the webinar. For more information and a tutorial of the best practices workflow, please watch our other webinar, Axiom Analysis Suite for Genotyping Analysis of Axiom Microarrays. There are two main methods of copy number analysis used with Axiom Microarrays. The first is a whole genome de novo analysis, which we refer to as the copy number discovery workflow in Axiom Analysis Suite. With this method, the hidden Markov model is used to determine copy number states. This provides whole genome copy number information and our software provides a visual tool to display copy number aberrations. This method is available for many human and agrogenomics axiom array types. The second method of copy number analysis used for some axiom microarrays is a fixed regions copy number analysis. This method is used when the breakpoints are known for regions of copy number interest, either from publications or from prior research. Please contact your local field application specialist or genotyping sales specialist if you'd like to know more about this capability in your Axiom array of interest. In this demo, we'll work with data from the Axiom PMD research array, which has both fixed regions analysis for regions of pharmacogenetic interest and a whole genome copy number analysis capability. Here we can see the content for the PMD research array design. The PMD research array has a backbone of over 800,000 markers in the GWAS module for genome-wide coverage for genotyping. In addition, we have other content that you see here for markers related to disease and predisposition to disease, Fenbear and ACMG59 genes, markers related to immunity, inflammation, ancestry, and many others. If you'd like more information on this array, feel free to reach out to your local field application specialist or genotyping sales specialist. Now let's take a look at the Axiom Analysis Suite software and begin to work with some of the copy number functionality using the PMD array as an example. If you have not used Axiom Analysis Suite before, I would recommend viewing our other webinar. Axiom Analysis Suite for Genotyping Analysis of Microarrays to help gain familiarity with the basics of the software. First, let's look at an output of the best practices workflow for a set of PMD array data. For this array type, running the best practices workflow performs a sample QC, genome-wide genotyping, and a copy number analysis for some regions of pharmacogenetic interest. Let's focus on the sample QC aspect first. Sample QC is covered in more detail in our other Axiom Analysis Suite webinar, but let's briefly examine the key QC metrics from the best practices workflow here. First, in the summary tab, we see that the array plate shows past. 
for the result in the plate QC summary. This is important since if a plate showed a failing result here, we would likely not recommend that this plate be used in later copy number discovery workflow. For a plate to pass, it must have an average call rate across all passing samples of greater than 98.5. Now let's look at the sample table to review some of the other metrics. On a per sample basis for the PMD array, we have four different metrics, DQC, QC call rate, MAPD, and waviness SD. DQC and QC call rate are the main metrics used for quality control of genotyping data. DISHQC, DQC, measures the amount of overlap between two homozygous peaks created by non-polymorphic probes. We want DQC values to be above 0.82 for each sample. QC call rate is a percentage of probe sets receiving a call based on a probe set list of autosomal markers that is typically a subset of the number of probe sets on the array. Usually around 20,000 probe sets are used for QC call rate, and we want this value to be above 97% per sample. The next two metrics to review are MAPD and waviness SD. These are both quality control metrics for copy number. Since the best practices workflow for the PMD array performs a copy number analysis for some fixed regions, we have these two metrics as part of the output of this workflow. If you're using an array type that performs genotyping without any fixed regions analysis, you would not see these two particular metrics. MAPD stands for Median Absolute Pairwise Difference, and this metric compares log two ratio of signals of probe sets that are adjacent to each other in genomic position. So this is a measure of noise in the data over a short range. And in contrast, the waviness SD metric is a measure of long range variation. So we want the MAPD value for a sample to be less than or equal to 0.35 and the waviness SD value to be 0.1 or below. I mentioned previously that the PMD array has both a fixed regions copy number analysis as well as the ability to perform whole genome copy number analysis. Let's first look at the fixed regions analysis that is part of the best practices workflow. The two tabs within the software that we'll examine here are the copy number summary table here and the CN region plot. To be able to view these side by side, I'm just going to click this vertical split and I'll click copy number summary table on the left and the CN region plot on the right. In the CN summary table, you can see that for this array, we have 11 copy number regions reported. Next to each of the regions, you see we have a column for the number of no calls. If we had samples that had failed the copy number QC metrics that we discussed earlier, which were the MAPD and waviness SD, those samples would be counted here. Then we have columns for the number of samples with a copy number state of zero, one, two, or three for each copy number region, plus a column for the chromosome. Copy number states that cannot be reported by the software are displayed as empty with a gray background, as we see here in the copy number three column for the RHD gene and the UGT V17 gene. You can see that as I click on a row for each copy number region, the corresponding CM region plot gets displayed on the right. And here we can see which samples have a copy number state for each of the regions of zero, one, two, or three. For example, looking at the GSTM1 gene, we have samples representing each of these copy number states. For example, 23 samples shown in red that have a copy number state of zero. I can click on a single sample to select it, or I can hold down left click on my mouse 
to circle a group of samples to select them. When I select samples in the CN region plot, those rows will then be selected in the sample table. We can see that these rows have been selected. In this data set, I'm only looking at one array plate on which 96 samples can be run. Its array plate barcode is shown here. And if I had batched data from several plates together for the best practices workflow run, all plates and their barcodes would be shown lined up along the x-axis. In the CN summary table, we can right click on any column to sort, filter, or copy the column. Let's try filtering, for example, by chromosome 19. Now you have a few different options for exporting. First, export current table would export a text file of just what is shown in the table currently. So it would reflect any filters that we have applied. We can also choose export all data, which would export the full table without any filtering. We can export selected regions. So if we had one or two rows, we could export those selected regions. We can also choose export copy number data. And this would provide a text file with the full copy number information for each sample and each fixed region. Let's also look at the mega region CN plot. This is a way to display multiple fixed regions at once. They just all need to be on the same chromosome. So let's select all the CYP2 D6 regions. And click Show Mega Region CM Plot. Now, on the right side of the screen, we see the plot with each of the fixed regions shown on the x axis and median log 2 ratio on the y axis. Each point on the plot is a sample. So I can click on single sample, follow it throughout the plot. And I can see that this sample was given a copy number state of one for each of the fixed regions for CYP2D6 markers. If I had multiple plates run in a batch, you could select different plates here, but this graph will always show one plate at a time. There are additional exporting options available from the sample table. The top three options in the export dropdown are for the QC metrics from the table below. But we can also export our copy number data for visualization in IGV format or Nexus format, or we can create a VCF file. To review, what we've been looking at so far is a fixed regions copy number analysis that is part of the best practices workflow output for the PMD array. In addition to the fixed region copy number data, the best practices workflow also contains all genotyping data. Genotyping is covered in our other webinar, Axiom Analysis Suite for Genotyping Analysis of Axiom Microarrays. Now that we've looked at these copy number regions, Let's move on to the copy number discovery workflow. Before we run the copy number discovery workflow for the PMD array, we first want to examine the quality control metrics from the sample table. This is because for the copy number discovery workflow, you only want to include in the analysis samples that have passed both genotyping metrics, including DQC and QC call rate, as well as the copy number metrics MAPD and waviness SD. Now this process may vary depending on array type. For example, for some array designs, we recommend generating a custom copy number reference prior to running the copy number discovery workflow. In that case, with a custom reference, we would still only want to include samples that pass DQC and QC call rate into the copy number discovery workflow, but we may be able to include samples that failed 
MAPD or waiving SSD. This is because using a copy number reference created with data made in the same lab with the same sample type or same population would reduce noise and possibly give lower MAPD and waiving SSD. Today we're using the PMD array and we've provided a built-in reference for this array based on data from several populations. So we can go straight from the best practices workflow, select all samples at past QC, and proceed to the copy number discovery workflow. In this data set, my samples are all passing the QC metrics. So I can just select all of the rows. And if I had any samples that were failing, I could exclude them with a control click on the row or just not select any row. But in this case, all samples are passing, so I am selecting all of the rows. So these are the samples I want to include in the next step, which is running the copy number discovery workflow. Now we just go to the reanalyze dropdown and click on reanalyze selected samples and click OK at the prompt. So that opened the main Axiom Analysis Suite application to the new Analysis tab. And all of our samples have been loaded into the cell file list. Next, let's choose the workflow, which will now be the copy number discovery workflow. We don't need to change any of the configurations. We should just use the defaults for this array type. So just give the discovery workflow batch a name and click Run. After the analysis finishes, from the Dashboard tab, we can just click Open for the Copy Number Discovery Batch. The Copy Number Discovery Batch allows for the display of several tables and visualization tools. So let's look at the dropdown under the QC analysis from the sample table. The top three options here are for the visualization of the QC metrics. For example, you see that by default, I have a plate view of the MAPD values on the right hand side. But I can also choose to generate a plate value of another metric. For example, waviness SD. So now you can see I have a plate view for the waviness SD along with my MAPD plate view. We can also generate a principal component analysis plot. Now to do that, let's select all of our samples from the table and click on PCA plot. Now all of my samples are currently highlighted, so I want to unselect them in the table to remove that highlighting. Then you can choose to color or shape each sample by any of the metrics available in the dropdown. So for example, let's choose computed gender. And now we can see that our samples are colored by red for female and yellow for male. This can also be useful when you've generated a multi-plate batch and you might want to adjust your PCA plot to color or shape by plate barcode. I'm going to adjust my display to show more of the sample table. Now we can generate a CN segments table. We can choose to include all of the samples in our segments table or just select one or a few samples. So this table will display any segment that has been assigned a copy number state of 0, 1, or 3, as well as copy number state 2 for non-pseudoautosomal regions on chromosome X in males. So this is a table of our copy number gains and losses. Next, for loss of heterozygosity, we can pull up the LOH table. 
So let's do this for just one sample. This table will show all regions that have been evaluated for LOH. And a flag of one in the LOH column indicates the presence of LOH. So let's filter this column by equals one. We also recommend setting a marker count filter of at least 25 markers. So I'll right click on this column, click filter and greater than or equal to 25. Now our table contains regions identified as having loss of heterozygosity across at least 25 markers with the sizes and positions given in the other columns. Coming back to our sample table, we'd next like to look at the whole genome view. So the whole genome view is a powerful visualization tool for looking at the copy number data. We could load all samples from the plate at once for the whole genome view, but let's start with just one. Maybe we want to look at these samples in our segments table. And then sorting that table by size, Let's scroll down to the end of the table and find those that have very large copy number regions identified. So for example, I see that sample E3 is showing a really large gain on uh, 12Q and 12P as well in this row. So maybe I wanna look at that sample in the whole genome view. Let's go back to our sample table. I can just search for that sample. And now to load it in the whole genome view, just QC analysis drop down and choose whole genome view. It will ask you to verify your annotation file. In this case, I only have one available, but make sure you're choosing the correct annotation file for your array type and library design. It will ask you to verify your NetFX genomic annotation file. And just click OK. The top window of our whole genome view shows a series of histograms as well as gene tracks. We just have one sample loaded. So the histogram tracks will show a sample frequency of one for any gain, loss, or LOH segment. The first histogram for copy number gain shows that we have this very large gain on chromosome 12. Scrolling down to the gene tracks, by default, we show RefSeq genes and OMIM genes. You can load tracks for other annotation sources by clicking the menu, graph settings, and then selecting any annotation sources that you wish to load. You'll be able to actually see the names of genes in these tracks when we zoom in, in just a minute. In the lower window, we have tracks for copy number state, LOH, log2 ratio, smooth signal, and B allele frequency. A large copy number gain in chromosome 12 for this sample is evident just by looking at the slight jump in chromosome 12 in the log2 ratio and smooth signal tracks, as well as by the pattern that we see in the B allele frequency track. So each dot in the B allele frequency track represents the B allele frequency for a particular probe set. So in regions with normal copy number state of two with no LOH, we'll see three lines in our B allele frequency track. So BB genotypes would have a B allele frequency of one. AB or heterozygous genotypes would have a B allele frequency of 0.5 and AA 
genotypes would have a B allele frequency of zero. So for this sample, where we have a gain on chromosome 12, we can now distinguish four lines in the B allele frequency track. These represent genotypes of BBB, ABB, AAB, and AAA for each of the genotype probe sets for this sample. So let's look at a different sample, maybe with some slightly smaller copy number segments. I'm going to go back to the sample table and choose a different sample. And now let's look at the whole genome view for this sample. In this sample, we see a smaller gain segment on chromosome 6. So we can zoom in on this region by right-clicking and dragging the mouse across the region and selecting Zoom to Selected Region. So while this segment is smaller than the full chromosome gain for the other sample that we looked at, we can still see the same pattern of a jump in the log2 and smooth signal as well as the splitting of the B allele frequency track. If you notice this little bubble right here where the track splits. And we can scroll down to our genes track and maybe even zoom in further to see what genes might be in this region. Then we can also save an image of this whole genome view. So let's also look at an example with LOH. I'll go back to my sample table and regenerate an LOH segments table using all samples. So I can find an LOH segment that I'd want to examine further in the whole genome view. So this one looks interesting as an example rather large region of LOH covering a large number of markers, B2. So let's go back to the sample table, find that sample, and let's generate a whole genome view for this one. We have several LOH regions identified for this sample, but the one I was interested in from the LOH table was on chromosome E, so let's zoom in to that region. Now with LOH, you won't see any different pattern for the log2 ratio or smooth signal, since this is a copy neutral event. But you will see that in the B allele frequency track, we only have two lines for this region because most or all genotypes for each probe set in the region for this sample are either AA or BB. Now let's say I was interested in a particular gene in this region. I can type the gene symbol into the search bar above to zoom to it. I can also use the left and right arrows to scroll through this region and to use the undo button to go back to the previous location or redo. Now that we've gone over the basics of using the whole genome view, let's also go through exporting options. So in either the segments table or the LOH table. We have options to export with the current filters applied by choosing current table or 
we can choose to export the entire table. From the sample table, we also have exporting options for the copy number data. You can choose to export in IGV, Nexus, or VCF format. So let's review. Now that we've gone through some of the basic features of copy number analysis with Axiom Analysis Suite. Please refer to the Axiom Analysis Suite user guide for a full listing of available features. Axiom Analysis Suite is a highly flexible, user-friendly software for genotyping as well as copy number analysis. The Axiom Precision Medicine Diversity Research Array used in this demo has both fixed region analysis for regions of interest for pharmacogenomic research and whole genome copy number analysis capabilities. For more information on any Axiom Array or the Axiom Analysis Suite software, please contact affisupport at thermofisher.com.